This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, uh, we're looking at Chapter 16 of the free lecture notes in paper F9. Uh, and the chapter's headed up valuation security and practical issues. But let me make it clear what we're talking about here. We're talking about the situation when we're buying at shares in unquoted, in an unquoted company. Or a large holding of shares in a quoted company. And the reason I've said a large holding, you know, effectively perhaps we're taking over the company, is that for a small number of shares in a quoted company, we know how to value them. We use the dividend valuation model. Uh, but uh, rather irrelevant, if the share price on the stock exchange is $5 and you want to buy a small number of shares, you'll obviously have to pay $5. For unquoted companies, we don't have a share price. You know, we'll have to determine um, uh, what the shares are worth. And for a large holding of shares in a quoted company, if we're effectively taking over the company, then all right, the share price may be $5 on the stock exchange, but we're likely to have to offer more. Well, maybe we're not prepared to offer $5. It's a question of how we decide what it's worth offering. Now, OK, in either case, we've been through the dividend valuation model. Uh, and assuming you've worked through the earlier chapter on equity, uh, it's easy enough to use a formula. But the problem is twofold. One, it does assume that the only factors involved are the dividends we expect and the return we require. Whereas in real life, things don't work quite so perfectly. Dividends, expected dividends, do affect the share price. But we haven't got what we call a perfect market. You know, you expect a higher dividend, but the share price only go, well, it takes time for the share price to go up as people are buying and selling. But also, of course, how are we going to estimate future dividends? You know, uh, we say, ah, oh, dividends are going to grow at 4%, but how do we know what shareholders expect it will grow at 4%? It's what shareholders expect that determines the market value. So a dividend valuation model is very limited, and the, biggest, the big limit is the estimation of future growth. And so from a practical point of view, uh, there are two other approaches we may look at, and what certainly would be looked at in deciding on a market value. Uh, and so over the page, the first is what we call a net assets basis. Uh, where, it means exactly what it says, we look at uh, the value of the uh, net assets, assets minus liabilities on the statement of financial position and divide by the number of shares. Uh, and I'm not going to put numbers that, I really shouldn't. How much are the assets worth? Well, the assets, the net assets are worth 500,000. Oh, there are 10,000 shares in issue. Divide through, that comes to $5 a share. Uh, the question is though, as I've written, what basis to argue the net assets at? Simply using the book values, the values on the statement of financial position is surely pretty meaningless in that particularly the non-current assets, unless they were bought very recently, the book value uh, is, has no relation really to the current value of the assets. And so much more sensibly, would either be to look at the realizable value uh, 
to look at the assets on the statement of financial position, but rather than use book values, use the values we could sell the assets for, how much could we get for the non-current assets and so on, and then divide by number of shares. And that really, if you're thinking of taking over a company, would uh, give you the minimum we'd be prepared to pay on a takeover. Because if you are uh, valued at what you could sell the assets for, then of course, buy the company, immediately sell the assets. I mean, that's the minimum you'd have to pay. Uh, there's no way the existing shareholders would accept a lower price than what they could sell the assets themselves for. Uh, perhaps the best measure to use would be replacement value. If I'm taking over your company, if I'm making an offer to buy all the shares, uh, then calculate how much it would cost to buy the assets myself individually and set up the company. And surely that's the maximum you'd be prepared to pay, subject to goodwill. But it would give us a guideline, that's all. But you see, if your company, I've looked at your stem to financial position, I've decided, oh, whatever values you're showing them at, I could buy the assets myself for half a million. Well, why should I pay you more than half a million, you know, when I could buy the assets myself? Maybe I will, but any extra I would pay would depend on how much I valued goodwill at. And that you couldn't be asked to do in this exam. But certainly, if I was thinking of taking over a company, I would look at those figures. It would help me form a judgment. There's no precise way of valuing. The other thing, though, very important and very common in real life, is what we call the earnings basis. In an earlier chapter, I explained what we meant by the P-E ratio. The P-E ratio is the market value of the shares divided by the current earnings per share. Well, I know what the current earnings are uh, of the business. I can find them out. You know, I said earlier, the problem is estimating future dividend growth rate. But current earnings, we know what they are. And so the way we use P ratios is we find the P ratio of similar quoted companies So, for example, I've looked at quoted companies in a similar industry, and they have a P-E ratio of 15. And I said before, uh, the P-E ratio is an indicator. It depends on how much future growth they're expecting. But for our type of business, shareholders are currently prepared to pay in other companies 15 times the current earnings. And so for our company that we're trying to value, we'd value of this company at 15 times the current earnings. Or if you're valuing individual shares, you know, if the current uh, earnings per share are 20 cents, fine, let's value the share at 15 times 20 cents, three dollars.
Now, in fact, if it's unquoted, uh, unquoted companies tend to be worth a bit less than quoted ones because the shares aren't so easy to buy and sell. And so for an unquoted company, use a slightly lower uh, P ratio. Uh, but there's no rules. Some textbooks say, oh, we should take use 75% of the, the P ratio of similar companies or something. There is no rule. You will be expected to apply a rule in the exam because there isn't one. Uh, but see what I mean. If similar companies have a P of 15, quoted companies be prepared to pay 15 times the earnings, fine. Let's value our unquoted company at 15 times the current earnings. But for the purpose of any discussion, make the point that if it's unquoted, you generally pay a bit less. Well, it's easy to get rid of the shares.